All right, I want to talk today about grace abounding, the grace of God abounding. What does that mean for believers? Romans 5 is where we're at. Romans chapter 5, and it begins this way in verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. God is able to make us stand, as it says in Romans 14. He's able to make his own servants stand. What does that mean that we have had given access by faith? It's the idea of being granted access. You know, when there's a, uh, you know, no admittance, no entrance, you have to have a secret code, you have to have a secret pass, you know, a little lanyard around your neck that you can get yourself in, or, you, or maybe it's, uh, you know, eye, what is it? What's that eye recognition, face recognition, or maybe it's your thumbprint. I don't know. There's just some access being granted in many top secret places. And here we have been brought to Christ by Christ because of his shed blood to stand in his presence. How God is able to make us stand in his presence, as Jude even says, with great joy one day. And here we've obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. So by grace you have been saved through faith. So we have access and then what, has, what else has happened? If you look down in verse 15, it says this, the free gift is not like the trespass. So we're talking about Adam who brought in sin into the human race, and then Jesus who brought in righteousness. The free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through the one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. The idea is there's a gift that has been received. We receive the abundance of grace. So we have access into the presence of God in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ by faith. It's, and we've received the abundance of grace as a gift. So this is what we need to know before we start talking about what it says at the end of the, cha of the chapter, which says in verse 20 and 21, Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You're on a path. You're on a path of righteousness. You're on a path to eternal life. And it's all because you have been granted access to God by faith. The gift of the abundance of grace has been received. And then it says that grace is reigning. That literally means to reign as a king. To reign as a king. God is our king. God is the sovereign king. And, and Jesus is grace incarnate. So we have access by faith into the presence of God in a relationship with Jesus. Uh, we have the gift of grace received. We have this grace upon grace upon grace, just a constant supply of, of grace in our life, which what it does is it, it enables us to live to the glory of God. So we approach the throne, really, in Romans 5. We're approaching the throne of the one who grants us this big view of grace, grace abounding, uh, grace exceeds sin because Christ conquered sin. That's the point. Grace abounds toward you and I. Grace exceeds sin because Christ conquered sin at the cross. So grace appeared when, when Christ appeared, and grace will appear when he returns. But now, the abundance of grace that is dwelling in believers through righteousness is greater than the remaining sin in you. That's what you have to believe as a believer. Even as you're getting pulled by a riptide or magnet pull of sin that you feel like you're just slipping in and you're, you're on a slippery slope or you're in quicksand, this is why you can live in freedom, not slavery, to sin. That we can be free as the children of God, that we can live actively worshiping God worshiping Jesus as Lord of all, seeking to obey the written word of God because grace overflows and grace empowers us to serve God.